Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 55. Hawaii could reverse the state's ban on gaming to help out with some budget shortfalls there. Yeah, but not everyone's for this. And we're going to talk with Hawaii anchor and reporter Tom George to see what's going on on the island. Plus, will Las Vegas allow 50% capacity by March 1st? That's apparently the plan right now, but it's not set in stone. We get into the details. And some big concerts announced in Las Vegas for 2021 and 2022. That and more coming up on Vegas Revealed. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's go tonight. Right now. Let's go to Vegas. We'll stay up all night. Open the Welcome to Vegas Revealed. So we are officially into February. As this episode drops, we're also all revved up for the Super Bowl. Thanks for being here. I'm Sean McAllister. And I'm Dana Roselli. Yeah, we have so much to talk about today. Really, tons of topics. But uh, something we're going to hit on has to do with our friends in Hawaii. That's right. You know, Las Vegas is considered the ninth island because we do have so many residents who have moved here from Hawaii. But there's a chance that Hawaii could end up looking a heck of a lot more like (laughs) Vegas, Dana. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, When you look back, you realize that they do not legalize, it's not even allowed to have gaming in Hawaii. And, you know, now that everyone is suffering, we're trying to come up with different kinds of ways for the states to make money. And apparently Hawaii thinks maybe legalizing gaming could be a way, but Man, when you look through uh, some of the stories done on this, you really notice that everyone's kind of coming up with reasons why it wouldn't work. Crime would go up, you know, different kinds of things. So we're going to talk with Tom George, who used to be a reporter here in Las Vegas, but now is an anchor and reporter in Hawaii to get the skinny on what's going down. Yeah, so it'll it'll be good to hear the ins and outs of that. Um, But getting to business right here in Las Vegas first, you know, we've been talking about when in the world is Las Vegas going to open up fully? When is entertainment going to be back into the swing of things? Well, it's seeming like Mm -hmm. it could be sooner than later because we're getting some announcements about some incredible shows that are are set to be performed in concerts here in Las Vegas this year and into next year. Right. One of the most recent announcements came for the weekend uh, to perform at T-Mobile Arena. Now, that's not going to be until 2022. But nevertheless, it's exciting that he's announced his global world tour and that Las Vegas is on the map and one of the show days. And of course, the weekend is the halftime performer at the Super Bowl. So uh, there's going to be a ton of attention placed on him uh, for the big game. And tickets coincidentally for his uh, big world tour go on sale the following morning Mm -hmm. monday morning uh at 10 a.m pacific time so uh, that's for the show here in las vegas yeah it's interesting because um i remember watching the lady gaga documentary and what a big deal doesn't matter we think oh lady gaga she's not you know like but what a big deal it is to perform at the super bowl how they wait with bated breath and so the weekend's taking this opportunity like hey we've got to announce something right it's a good marketing plan why not and i think it's going to be a a a fantastic halftime show and the arena tour is going to be amazing too and it's good that we have things that are coming back on the calendar as well. Uh, Somebody else talking about arena tours is Garth Brooks. Mm. And we've talked about this in past episodes here on Vegas Revealed. Uh, Garth Brooks was set to open Allegiant Stadium, uh, which is where the Las Vegas Raiders play. This was last year. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to have this big concert, the big, splashy, grand opening for Allegiant Stadium. And as the shutdown happened, uh, that obviously had to be pushed back. And it was supposed to be, the rescheduled concert was supposed to be this month in February. But obviously that's not happening either. No. So he's pushed it again, right, to July. And fingers crossed that that one will happen. (laughs) He may have to push it again. We just don't know. And that's really part of the, the planning process. It's hard to plan. But it is seeming like summertime is kind of like go time for entertainment to pick back up because Usher 
uh, has a, a residency show at Caesars Coliseum that is supposed to start this summer as well, either in June, late June or July. Um, so it, it's seeming like that is where you know show producers and casinos really have their eyes on summertime as you know a potential restart date for big shows and gatherings in a theater and arena environment. Right. But I guess, you know, it all comes down to the amount of people that will be able to attend these shows. Right now we're at 25 maximum capacity in our restaurants, our bars, also our casinos and resorts. So that would be a little difficult to put on a a big show at the Coliseum. But uh, there's been talk that that could change by March 1st. So apparently our county commissioner has said that they are working to possibly increase from 25% maximum to 50% maximum by March 1st here in Las Vegas. But also, you know, you think about March, that happening, then like you're saying, like when we get to summer, then could that increase go even more to 75% or maybe, I don't know, full capacity. I don't know if we'll we'll be at that with separation or whatever. But um, it was weird because there was a tweet by the county commissioner, then it was deleted. And so everyone's going, well, wait, what's going on? Are we, are we planning for March 1st? So I think it probably, you know, has a, a little bit of a, a ways to go. Well, and, and there is some interesting chatter about how um, how casinos and ticketing sites are going to sell tickets for these shows and there's there's been talk that um, places I believe like Ticketmaster could partner with uh, clear which is the organization that does all of the TSA pre-screening mm-hmm. and all that and essentially whenever you get your COVID vaccine, you would link that up with a a clear account and you would need to have that in order to buy tickets. So really it would be an incentive to get the vaccine so that you could get back into sporting events, concerts, Mm. large gathering environments. Now that is still all talk. Nothing has been um, officially, you know, confirmed, no partnerships officially announced yet. But I know that that was one of the options that uh, ticketing sites were looking into in order to get live entertainment back up and running again. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see how things, I mean, I do feel like things are starting to, I don't know, there is a little bit of a vibe, let's put it that way, where you can feel changes are happening. You know, our, our numbers have gone down a, a slightly. I think we, we did have like a record month, but then in, in a bad way, I think it was December, but you know, January and as we're into February, things are starting to look a little better here. And it just feels, don't you feel it? Like there's, some, like I'm, I'm seeing like more marketing of places and people pushing out, you know, uh, events, you know, within the rules. But it just feels like there's a little bit of a turn there. And, and I hope that that is a, a trend that that continues because we need it. Mm-hmm. We need it. And we need to mentally. Have, we need it. <laughs> we need it mentally. We need it economically, too. We mm-hmm. need, you know, conventions coming back in. We were actually on a, a phone call with a, a business partner the other day who was talking about uh, that I believe in March that some conventions are starting to return to Las Vegas with a smaller capacity, but conventions nonetheless, it looks like they're going to start, you know, bringing business Mm. back to town, which is great. Sean, I drove by, and I know we've talked about it before, the new convention center the other night, but I I haven't driven by at night. And so I was driving by at night, and oh my. I mean, I literally like had a smile. I'm not kidding. I was like, this place is, when it was all lit up, and they had the front lights on, it's absolutely gorgeous. It it is stunning. And I'm like, I cannot wait for this to be be used. It's cool. And then even the area around there. Like there's like even like a bagel cafe, I think it's called. But the sign is like all lit up and it's blue and it's gold. And then the and then there's little areas that are lit up. And then the convention center has all these kind of like, uh, you know, goldish lights. And it looks amazing. And I was like, I still can't believe how I know it's been a long year, but how quick it went up. 
<laughs> I was like, it was there, it wasn't there, and then it's there. <laughs> that's true. And yeah. I think that's a testament to how little we've been leaving our homes. Right. Because on a you know, under yeah. any normal circumstances, you know, be driving by, noticing the construction mm-hmm. as it goes. But now it seems like whenever you leave the the house, which, you know, it can be chunks of time between leaving the house, especially if you're going to a different part of town, there's new uh, shopping malls that have popped up out of nowhere. There's housing developments that have popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. A convention center oh that's God. popped up out of nowhere. And it's beautiful. It's so, it's just, I can't wait for everyone to be able to use it and see it. It really is stunning. Really stunning. I mean, it's it's super cool. And then right down the road, even with Resorts World, I'm like, I mean, that whole area is like their whole screen every night. Now they're doing like advertisements and talking about what's coming soon. And so, I don't know, it feels like there's more vibrance, more light. Well, in, in I mean, looking at, at summer as a potential reopening for, you know, big entertainment venues, Resorts World is also set to open this summer, mm-hmm. which is crazy to think. We've just been seeing it go up for, I mean, the past couple years. Mm-hmm. And to think that it's finally wow. going to be opening is incredible. And I think they have like 6,000 jobs or something to to hire before they open. Um, we'll have to go in depth on a, a yeah. episode coming up, go really in depth about Resorts World, what to expect there, and uh, some of the, the new innovations that the resort has. Yeah, and it's interesting because I stare from my balcony at the Drew, which has been sitting there for, I don't know, I feel like oh my God, it's 13 least, years. Yeah, I was going to say 12, 13 years. <laughs> Unfinished, yeah. right? And I say the, the Drew because that's the latest project. It had gone through a couple names of Fountain Blue. But anyway, the Drew has been put on hold again. And I think that is like 2022 late or 2023 now. So... That's I'm not going to hold my breath. No, for that one. that's across from Resorts World, so I'm hoping that gets done too at some point. Um, something we also did want to mention is just kind of a little study that came out here. Clark County releasing some numbers on they do that like uh, was it called contact tracing? Yes. And yep. they they you know if you get test positive for COVID, they you know ask a few questions about like where were you? Where are some of the places that you were before you contracted it? And apparently more than 13,100 people in Clark County said that they visited a restaurant before receiving a positive mm. COVID test. So, and they're saying we can't guarantee that that's where it's from right. or where they contract. Right. But it just, you know, looking at that, it is in- interesting and something to keep in mind and we're not saying don't go to restaurants cuz we all do here and there, but you know, little be a little bit more, more cautious, maybe. Yeah, and uh, there is a full report on uh, the Clark County website um, and the Southern Nevada Health District on these locations um, that they've pinpointed to uh, potential uh, COVID contraction mm-hmm. sites. So, if you want to look that, you can go to Southern Nevada Health District's website to to check out that full report. Yeah. Well, let's get back to Hawaii. State lawmakers are kind of preparing to have serious apparently discussions about whether they should allow some form of legalized gambling in Hawaii because they have a lot of bills to play, pay, a lot of budget shortfalls. I mean, Nevada's talked about legalizing the lottery before too because of the same reasons. Basically, they you know are a tourism-based economy like us, and they're trying to come up with different ways. Yeah, and so gaming has come up once again as a topic of discussion to to see if you know now is the time for the state of Hawaii to reverse its ban on legalized gaming. And uh, Tom George is a reporter who we know here in Las Vegas. He's now at KITV4 in Hawaii, and he's joining us now to give us all the ins and outs Mm -hmm. of this debate. Tom, how's it going? Good, aloha. I mean, you know, can't complain, it's Hawaii, right? As we mentioned, you know, uh, gaming, legalized gaming, has come up again as a topic of conversation there in Hawaii. Where do things stand right now? Or is there really a, a prospect of this happening? Yeah, so well, it's kind of up in the air right now. So when we're talking about gaming in Hawaii, it's not really the state per se that's that's doing it. It's basically the way kind of around it, I guess, because, you know, as you know, Hawaii and Utah are actually only two states that don't have any form of legalized gaming at all. No, no lottery, no nothing. I mean, it's part of the reason why so many people in Hawaii like to go to Vegas. But in this case, um, it's actually would be done by uh, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, which Basically, that's the organization um, that deals with housing for Native Hawaiians. So it would kind of be sort of on on that 
land. So kind of the equivalent of, you know, you would think of a Native American casino is kind of more of that concept, but it's facing a lot of opposition because basically right now the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, there's been, you know, a waiting list for people to get homes. And it's obviously an island, it's limited land. And some people have, uh, if you basically have to have 50% Hawaiian blood uh, to be able to get a home. And there have been people that have been on this waiting list for, you know, decades. And it's gotten to the point even where, you know, if someone's grandma or their parent is on the list, they may pass away and have to give the spot to the next generation just to even get this mm -hmm. land. And so, I mean, that's part of the reason why they are considering doing this in the first place, kind of like other Native American tribes, you know, to, to raise money for that. But a lot of people are upset about it because they're saying, hey, we have this housing crisis and yet we would use land to uh, put a casino there. But it's definitely got a lot of people talking, too, because as you guys know, the Vegas lobby um, is such a huge deal here because, I mean, there are package deals. I mean, I, as soon as I moved here, I met people that they, they go to Vegas four or five times a year and they have these package deals, especially, you know, all the Boyd properties, the Cal. The, I mean, I was just driving to work the other day and they're already doing ads for the Cal on the radio again. They have a whole uh, jingle for it, too. So, oh, I mean, it, that, we love that. I know. Yeah. The whole Ninth Island connection is uh, is real. You know, they it's uh, now, yeah. now, now stuck on my head. It's uh well, <laughs> well, and that, do you want to sing it for us? Also, if you feel like Vegas, there's just one place to stay, and it's like you find it at the Cal, and then they got the. <laughs> That's my best uh, rendition, but they got all the, you know, this, uh, Hawaii themed stuff there. You know, they have the, the holo holo that means travel, so they they have the holo holo bar there. So, um, uh, but it, it it is kind of funny to me though that you'll have people that'll just go there and gamble, and uh, you know. Yeah, like when I go on vacation, I want to experience, you know, the culture of wherever I'm going. But it's just funny that it's like, you know, people from Hawaii, they'll go to Vegas and then they'll go to the same, you know, noodle shops or the shave ice place uh, or the Hawaiian restaurants at the, at the Cal and then see all hang out with all the same people that they would be doing at home. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so just to their, each their own, taking their normal crowd and just like going to Vegas to gamble for, you know, however long they go there. But it's been rough, right, you know, right. without, without with all the travel restrictions and everything too. Yeah, it, it has been. I mean, listen, um, we we love we love we love our Hawaii visitors, and and even when I was li listening to you talk about you know possible uh, gaming in Hawaii, it does make me a little nervous. Like, well, but but they come here to gamble. I don't I don't want them to have their own casino, <laughs> and I don't mean it that way. But you know what I'm right. saying. I know, I know what you're saying, and and I don't. Well, like I said, it's it's very much up in the air, and it, it may it may not even happen. I don't think that it's going to substitute Vegas because I think people are so loyal to that experience, they'll still go to Vegas because, I mean, aside from the gambling element, I mean, if you think about it this way too, you know, for most people on the mainland, you know, Hawaii is like your your ideal vacation. When you think about that dream vacation, you're like, I want to go to tropical paradise. You know, I want to be sipping my ties on the beach, but. For people that grew up here, I mean, they're used to that. So what's a vacation to them? They want desert, lights, gambling, like pretty much like the opposite of what they would be getting at home. So true, I, I, true. I, don't, I don't think it's going to stop as a, as a destination, but it is. it definitely has people sweating, especially in the, you know, the gaming industry, looking at that, scratching their heads. But I don't think it's going to be a substitute for Vegas. And it may not even go through, but it, there's still like a lot of layers that would have to happen for that to even be something they would consider. And another factor is too, I mean, you know, if, even if it does go through, who's going to build it? I mean, a lot of the a lot of the ma major builders and players that you would even need to get a casino off the ground are probably based in Vegas anyway. So, because we don't really have the infrastructure for it. Yeah, I, I think you'd have a lot of uh, construction barges showing up with everything <laughs> that you would need to uh, build a casino out there out there on the islands. But I mean, even your your governor is, is opposed to this idea, too. Right. Like there yeah. there are some high level people that, that would need to be convinced and really get on board to make this happen. Yeah. I mean, the governor has been against it. There there have been a lot of state senators and our lawmakers that have already said that they're against it. I mean, Hawaii, Hawaii politics is kind of unique uh, because, you know, it's a very it's the bluest state in the country on paper, but you have like you have a lot of even though the Democrats control all levels of government, it's they're a lot more old school conservative uh, when it comes to well conservative with a small c when it comes to things like gambling. You you do hear a lot of the the arguments that it's going to bring crime, you know, it could bring you know trafficking and things like that, or you know if if they put a casino in. So a lot of the the higher level state officials are kind of 
wary of it or against it, but um, that's kind of the interesting politics at play just because um, to a certain extent, they don't have much of a say in it, uh, you know, but it would still have to get approval because like I said, it is more of an issue of um, the native Hawaiian community and, and what they think about it because at the end yeah. of the day, that's what it would be used for. It would be on native Hawaiian homelands. It was so, but interestingly though, the area that they're talking about for it's in, I don't know how familiar you guys are with Oahu, but um, it, it could work though, because um, it's Kapolei is the area that they're talking about. So, um, you know, you have the, the city of Honolulu and then you have more of the outskirts. And this is an area where it's, they've done a lot of new developments. So, you know, the big Disney property, Aulani, that's over there, the Four Seasons, all the big golf tournaments are all in this mm -hmm. little resort area. So that's where they're talking about for the potential casino. So in theory, I could actually see it fitting in with that whole, you know, area of the island because you already have the tourism and the Disney properties and it's a little bit more tourist focused, I guess. So I, you know, I could see it fitting in with that aspect of it though. Yeah, I've I've stayed over on that side of the island, and it, it is beautiful over there. And it would have a uh, there's definitely land, mm -hmm. <laughs> open yeah. land over there for a casino. But you know, as you said, lots of lots of hurdles. Yeah, and and it's funny, Tom, because everyone always gives me a hard time for this. I, I've been to Hawaii. Uh, well, I've been to Maui, and I was there for like I don't know, like five days, and I was there for a wedding, and it was really relaxed, and it was great. But it, there was one point where I was like, all right, I kind of need to kick it up a little, and uh, yeah, this is I mean, a little too I, hang loose for me. It, it is. It is. It is a little <laughs> sleepy sometimes, you know. I mean, it's, well, you know, I just I was in Vegas, obviously, and uh, worked with you before I came here, and it's that was the, the first thing I noticed adjusting to. I mean, obviously, it's made up for by the great beaches and that element of it, but it's it's like, you know, it's things close early. I mean, you know, yeah. you take for granted not even not even like partying or doing anything like that. But then you, I think we forget how weird Vegas is in terms of just like being able to go go to the grocery store at three a.m. or get tacos at three a.m. or basically do mm -hmm. any or go to the gym like pretty much anything you want being open at all times here, especially the, like you said, the neighbor islands. Things close pr pretty early, so. It, it's a different world, that's for sure. <laughs> I, it world. is. It is. But uh, listen, we miss you in Las Vegas. We love what you're doing in Hawaii. You seem to be doing a great job. And I must say, Sean, whenever Tom George is, uh, when we worked together at Channel 13, it was always incredible because I always felt very confident with Tom. You could send him out on anything and you knew that you were going to get a good live report. <laughs> so uh, we miss you here. Uh, I miss you guys too. But I mean, yeah, you know, Vegas and then Hawaii, I feel like I've, I've lucked out in the... <laughs> Yeah, you have. In terms of a location in the news world. But I definitely am uh, going to have to plan a trip back to Vegas soon. We'll hang out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Tom. And, and we'll be checking in whenever uh, Ho Hawaii news warrants. We'll check back in with you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the Ninth Island connection, there's always something going on. So. All right. All thanks, right, Tom. Thanks, Do we guys. say aloha on the end, too? Is that aloha? Yeah, or is that only hello? Hello and goodbye. So that works. Okay. Right. <laughs> there we go. Aloha, you guys. Aloha. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Our two tips are still to come here on Vegas Revealed. But first, we wanted to remind you that Valentine's Day is coming up in less than a week, just a week away from Valentine's Day. And it can be really tough to come up with an idea that's really heartfelt and unusual, something that's, you know, stays away from the box of heart-shaped candies in the Hallmark card, Dana. <laughs> That's right. You know, we interviewed Jeff Diamond on episode 54 of Vegas Revealed, if you want to go back and listen to that interview. But he has a lot of history here in Las Vegas. He played with the platters and the coasters. And right now he's doing Skype grams, nice and safe, but he's still using his talents and bring it into your living room and just having a little bit of fun. You can contact him at jeffdiamondmusic.com or he also has a listing on gigsalad.com. We've got these listed in our listener notes. Again, it's jeffdiamondmusic.com. You can go, you can look around and pick a personal message that he'll do live for you. And he, he'll perform a love song for your sweetheart for as little as nine ninety five. So go on, uh, check that out. That's a great deal, by the way, for a live custom performance. Sure. JeffDiamondMusic.com is where you can book your personal, private performance. That's right, and he's available for weddings, too. All right, Dana, what do you say we uh, give out some tips? Let's do it. Okay, we told you about Crimson, right, during Christmas time at Red Rock, which is our incredible resort casino off the strip. And now... 
and I don't know if people like if you haven't looked at our social go look at our social this video we did of Crimson and it was amazing it was the jolliest joint around the jolliest joint and that entrance tunnel is so cool like you know like it was probably the most popular picture at the holiday time don't you think in Vegas it it totally was it was just dripping with decorations and just such a a festive entrance into a, a into a whole winter wonderland is really what they transformed it into yeah so now that Mary Crimson is over, apparently there are plans for Crimson in Bloom, which is this garden-inspired indoor-outdoor kind of terrace lounge cocktail floral decor, you name it, that all kicks off on February 12th. So we're looking forward to checking that out. And, and the space is going to, obviously, with a name like uh, Crimson in Bloom, that's going to be floral-themed, but they're they're also going to have, like, garden gnomes and tableside rosé cart mm. and a, a lot of uh, cocktails Fun. that have a lot of botanicals mixed in, some elderflower, orange blossom, that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, it looks really cool. And listen, shout out to Station Casinos and and Red Rock. They have come up with some really incredible, unique things that you can do safely in Las Vegas, inside a hotel casino. And really, like we said, some of the photos over the holidays, I mean, most of them were from Mary Crimson. Yeah, and you know what? I do have to tell you, whenever I have been to a Station Casinos property during this whole time, it has been, I think, the safest that I felt in a casino environment. They do a great job of screening people on the way in. They always have people going around, wiping down the, the machines. It's They do a really good job. They do. And I remember you telling me that, you know, outside of this podcast, you told me that on your own one time as yep. we were going to meet there. And I remember thinking the same thing when I went in. I'm like, oh, yeah, Sean said. And then when I went through, uh, something else I noticed is the staff is really friendly because some of the casinos that you walk into and if you have to get your temperature, whatever, they're like, next, uh, like grumpy, you know, I don't want to be there. <laughs> but at Station, <laughs> at Red Rock, they're always like all friendly, like, hey, how are you? Have a good night. And they I, do. I, I like that. It's really nice. It is. And, and that's why... <laughs> That is the the place that locals love, Station Casinos. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Sound like a commercial. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, we're looking forward to that, and we'll probably, you know, hit that up when it opens. Again, it's February 12th, and that whole tunnel there, I saw little reels on Instagram, and it looks like the flowers come down from the ceiling, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's all about. Really cool. Hey, and our other tip, as we, uh, you know, just enter February, um, we're looking ahead a little bit to March. Of course, this is... a a huge tourism time normally for Las Vegas. Over 3 million people visit Las Vegas in March because of March Madness. Right. And remember last year it started and then it stopped and then it paused and then it never kicked back up. (laughs) I know. Oh my God. I mean, we were just getting ready for all the March Madness action and then the world shut down. Um, But If you are planning a trip to Las Vegas, I don't know if you're in L.A., Phoenix, Utah, and you're planning on driving in, or maybe you're farther away and you're planning on flying into town, just remember to, if you are planning to be here, make sure to book, book, book ahead of time. Get reservations to anything that you think you might do. And if you need to cancel them, if, if your schedule doesn't permit... That, that's fine, but just make reservations. Yeah, and, you know, we started talking about this because uh, we were trying to book a dinner for Saturday, the Saturday evening before the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, and started looking around at different places to go on, like, the Sunday or Monday of this week. Everything was booked, and when we started actually making phone calls because we couldn't do it online, they were like, "Yeah, sorry, it's the Super Bowl, and you know they only have twenty five percent capacity right now, so they're full." And people were planning out weeks in advance. That's crazy. I know. That's crazy. And so be care- you know plan. You don't want to get here and then all of a sudden you can't go anywhere. Well, right. And and Super Bowl usually brings in about three hundred thousand people to Las Vegas. So when you think about three million spread over you know, mm-hmm. the the course of the month, there's going to be a lot of people here. Even if the numbers are lower this yeah. year, there's still going to be a lot of people. And, you know, if occupancy does go up a little bit, that'll help. But still, you're going to need reservations. Right. 
I went and uh, made a prop bet, a couple of prop, actually a few prop bets for my oh, dad's that's birthday. Right. Yeah, and I had never done that before, so I didn't know how to do it. So I was like asking on Twitter and asking friends, and I could have asked uh, you. I didn't know you had ever done <laughs> prop bets, but I text you enough, so I thought, let me leave Sean alone. Um, <laughs> and I needed to get there to make these bets for my dad's birthday, which is February 7th, the day of the Super Bowl. So anyway, I had never done prop bets, and it was so easy. I love how they're all numbered, and you go there and you pick up the sheet in the sports book. Book, they're all numbered and then you just write down the number and say how much you want on that yeah it makes it really easy <laughs> well it's yeah well, i got my dad something about no score at the last two minutes of the first quarter okay okay he put some money down on that yeah and then something about will there or won't there be a safety okay. in the second half yeah. something like that um he's got tampa bay to take it all and then um, I picked an MVP for him, like who would get most valuable player, because those odds were all different. And the one I picked for him was 25 to 1. So, like, you you know, it's not a shoe in, but, you know, there's a chance and you win, you know, a decent amount of money if you put 10 bucks down. Like, it, it, like I think he'd win, like, obviously 250 yeah. if for 10. So, you know, and I forget his name, but he's on the bucks. <laughs> Something Evans. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why you have your sports book ticket. <laughs> It, it exactly. tells you everything you need to know. There was there were prop bets on there that were like, will Tom Brady throw a complete pass in the first quarter? And it's like, yes. <laughs> so if you vote no, vote bet no. I have the worst gaming lingo. <laughs> so if you put money down on no, obviously your odds are not, you know. Not good. But He's I have probably to s- going to complete the pass. <laughs> he probably is, yes. But our um, our sports book directors really do come up with some great mm-hmm. prop bets. Uh, so so kudos kudos to them. Yeah. And, uh, it's how many times we're going to see Giselle was one of them. Oh, Tom yep. Brady's wife. Yep. And then how many times, or if at all, they will bring up former, or sorry, not former, current coach of the Patriots. Name? Bill. Oh, Bill Belichick. Yes, if they will say his name. So I was like, okay, thinking about that, going, okay, yep, they're going to sit there and they're going to go, oh, I bet Bill Belichick wishes he was here. This, You know, you know like they're going to say something. The commentator is well, 100% or maybe they're not. going to talk about it. They yeah. absolutely will. With a yeah. number of times that the Patriots have been at the Super Bowl, of yeah. course they're going right. to bring up Belichick. And with Brady, you yeah. know, being there with the Buccaneers this time, I think that's a no-brainer. Right, so that was one of the prop bets. But yeah. things like that, anyway. Well, if you bet on the on the big game, good luck. We hope that the the score turns out or turned out in your favor, depending on when you're listening. <laughs> exactly, I know. Yeah, this comes out on a Saturday, so we may all be moving on. So next weekend, oh, it seems like there's something every weekend is Valentine's Day. So that means we'll be spreading the love for you with another episode of Vegas Revealed. The favorite Hallmark holiday for everyone out there. <laughs> and uh, we expect to hear your plans, Sean, because I won't have any. I I need to think of some plans. <laughs> but usually we just stay home and, and cook a nice meal together. Right. Okay. We, we make it into like a home celebration instead of like going out and doing all the right. commercial and you, stuff. And you did that before even the pandemic. That was kind of your Oh yeah, yeah, we we always have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people remember you can order Jeff Diamond as a singing gram as well. He does Skype grams, really cool. Uh we actually got a listener to write us a little message and say they called up Jeff and ordered him for a fun special happy birthday message for a coworker. Yeah, so the great idea, uh, you know, whether you want uh, just a quick Skype uh, performance and message or you want a full show, Jeff can do it for you. That's right. All the details in our listener notes, okay, everyone? So go there and all the contact information is listed. Hey, have a great week. Plan ahead. Book ahead. Think about that Valentine's Day and we'll talk to you then. Bye. Let's get away. Who wants to make